So welcome everyone. My name is Angela Mills and I work for the town of Amherst. This is a meeting of the Amherst Cultural Council. I want to thank everyone for their work and let everyone know that this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the town of Amherst YouTube channel shortly. And um, Jillian, would you like me to make you host or Matt host? What works best? You can make me host. Matt had his hands full. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I will start by reading the, the statement pursuant to the chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so um, on the town website via the recording in progress now. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post the video um, uh, on the town website uh, of the rec comprehensive recording of the proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, to Angela's point, can someone um, keep an eye on the attendees um, area just in case somebody does join? I, I probably will not be noticing that that area during the call. Would that um, show up as like an additional participant? Is that how we would know? There, somebody would just be there. Yeah. So okay. I, also, I also have to take a roll call to assure that uh, audio is working for everyone. So starting with Cody. Are you muted, Cody? I'm here. Very good. Thank you. Rachel. I'm here. Christy. I'm here. And Matt. Here. Excellent. Okay. So uh, unless anyone has any urgent topics, I think we'll hop right into uh, from where we left off, which I have to find. Okay. Uh, we left off with the next grant would be Gallery A3. So Christy, are you in the same position that you were in last year? Um, yes. Okay, then we need to table this one because we don't have a quorum to discuss it. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Hey. Um, okay. And that gets us to um, the next one. Rachel, are you? You got you that got the time going for us. Yep. Thank you. Sure. So this is Ghost and Ensemble incorporated applying for rewild experimental ensemble music by sky mcclay pauline oliveros miriam uh, philonen and ben richter and this is happening uh in two weeks at umass um that's my dog umass amherst's um can't see the whole thing Sorry, folks, I'm having a lot of technical difficulties at the moment. Can anyone else see the name of that um, location at UMass that I am not recognizing? I'll get it. <laughs> My computer is acting crazy. Oh, Besenson Hall. All right. They are asking for 2000 uh, two hundred and fifty dollars, and as far as where we were with them, uh, as as a group, um, they were a two point oh overall. So this group, um, the Ghost Ensemble, it's a nonprofit, contemporary music, um, Nanette, and they're based here in Amherst. This is their first ever um, Amherst event. And it's going to be presented, um, presenting brand new compositions alongside landmark work of experimental classical music, iconic composer um, Pauline Oliveros, rare uh, performed immersive orchestral masterwork, Mountain Air. 
Uh, this is its East Coast premiere. Um, another Amherst composer, Miriam Philanon, um, will have intricate, <laughs> nothing's working tonight, <laughs> intricate electroacoustic sharp diamond follows and goes oboist Sky McClay's Harmony Friends. Uh, in which there's an inflating harmony tree sculptures and vibrating tree shaped free read sound creatures um, that interact in a whimsical yet intense sonic and kinetic counterpoint within the ensemble. Um, this is also Ghost Ensemble directors Ben Richter's uh, world premiere for uh, Rewild, which concludes the event with a pulsing breathing sonic ecosystem that marks humanity's fragile transient yet vital role with immensity of geologic time that should be interesting geologic time and musical time um as far as our uh notes with this um folks one folks said hey it's free another person um said that they love the work but it's a large ask and another person said yeah they're asking for uh, a large amount of money and it's about 150 folks they expect to attend. So with that, um, comments and anyone champion fully funding this? I, I think it's a great project. It's a big ask, but I think we should give them 60, 70% if possible is what I would say. I, I would agree. It's really unique if it's if it's possible. And, and when we talk about percent totals of different types of music um yeah, you know this is this is a totally different type of um did they say it was classical i mean it's, it's definitely contemporary but it seems like um i think it's really contemporary, classical experimental yeah. you know it seems great it's just um i you know i i don't think we oh no i don't think we can do it all but I would support a, a strong support. Yeah. Uh, anyone else, other comments? Does, is everyone in agreement to try to, to do, you know, kind of a more than 50% funding if possible? I'm hearing nothing. Yeah, if possible, that would be good. I think with this one and some of the other, a few of the other ones had in my notes that, um, um, if if we can't give them as much as we would like to give them, then at least if we can match whatever their um, venue or host is providing. So, for example, in this case, UMass, you know, it's like if we can match whatever UMass is providing. And so, interesting. Least. Yeah. So, just to kind of go over um, the, the fees for this. So, it is. Heavy in paying the the artist, it's three hundred and thirty three dollars each for the nine uh, post ensemble musicians, and two hundred for the fifty for the conductor, and a hundred each for the five local guest musicians. So as far as stipends go, you know that's all very reasonable. Um, three hundred and fifty of their budget is travel and transportation, which we cannot do. Um, there's also something about dinner for two hundred, which we couldn't do. They're not asking us for that much. Um, and marketing um, at 2000, I think, is is quite high, but this is a unique event. So uh, and a one time performance like that. And they did say that they would eliminate outside PR if necessary, uh, or they might reduce the number of local guest musicians um, to fewer than five if, if they're not fully funded. Uh, I think I, I've got 1500 down here, which, you know, it certainly warrants that. Is, is everyone in line with that as a as a rough number? Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, so next we have um, the uh, Garden Street Brew Acapella Group, and this is a local vocal chord bowl number twelve. Uh, I, I think the date must be incorrect. It says April 1, twenty twenty two. Um, we need to validate that it's happening at Amherst High. They're asking for $1,900, which is the entire budget, and expect 850 folks to be uh, served. It's um, 
This has been happening since 2006. It brings together high school, college, and adult singing groups for acapella music. It's uh, produced by their adult singing group. It was created to showcase Pioneer Valley's local talent and to be a vehicle for benefiting many worthy causes through ticket sales, sponsors, programs, ads. And since 2009, they've contributed all the proceeds um, to both Amherst and Northampton's music programs, allowing them to purchase musical instruments, uh, songwriting, keyboards, choral music, etc. And this year they're doing a Pay What You uh, Want concert, enabling all to attend. So, um, no fee to see the show and any income raised from local sponsors and donations goes directly back to Amherst and Northampton's uh, school music departments. Comments here were um, large ask, but uh, it seems to all go back into the community and I think that's it. So I will open it up to, to comments as far as is there anyone who wants to fund the full 1900. Julian? Yes. Um, I can just give con the date. I corresponded with this grantee a little bit. She was struggling with the technology. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that date corresponds to a flyer that she sent me during that process about their last um, project. Yes. So my understanding is that they were looking for something upcoming, not, not something that happened last April. But that's not. <laughs> uh, I'm going to look back through and see if there is a specific date for, the, for what they're asking for. Um, mm -hmm. But assuming that there is, I, I think it's a great project. I'd like to fully fund it if we can. Yeah, so um, the only thing that gives me slight pause here is why didn't they ask Northampton for anything since Northampton schools benefit uh, from the proceeds, but it is happening here in Amherst. Uh, the stipends are, um, let's see. Salary fees about a hundred hundred dollars for uh, college and adult singers groups, so a, a hundred for each group, and um, there's a five hundred dollar janitorial uh, fee for cleaning cleaning up, I guess. So uh, it's it's a pretty thin thin budget, uh, considering that it is a large ask for us. Um, oh, you know what? I'm looking at the um, Roxy Schneider has sent a, an email uploaded support material mm -hmm. uh, confirming from the high school that it's April 1st, 2023 is their, uh, that's okay, their that date. Helps. Thank you. Um, you know, I would personally like to, to fully fund it considering it, it all goes back to the community, but it is a large ask. Any, anyone have any thoughts? Yeah, I do agree. It's a bit weird since it's not even further in just a teacher of inner. So I feel weird. Feel we should not fully fund it? I, I voted to um, fund it, like half funded. That was mm -hmm. what I had in my notes. Um, yeah. I, a little I, bit based on all of what you've all said, too. So, anyway. Is everyone good with around 1,000 instead of 19, you know, 1,900? Yeah. Okay. I love your dog, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there are no other comments, I'll keep going. Um, there is uh, the next one is the Hadley Climate Change Committee. It's art and composting, and this is in June, and it's uh, a project with postcards and uh, posters uh, around Hadley uh, and Amherst. Uh, and they are asking for $400. And um, they would like to create a beautiful display of artwork and photographs provided by the community to promote composting. The display will be printed in posters and distributed around town. And um, they will also print postcards, which will be available to the public. Um, 
Is there anyone who'd like to champion this particular grant? I I love this project. I mean, I think it's hysterical. The you know art and composting, <clears throat> such a valley project. Um, I mean, I don't think I think the ask is so modest, um, and it's just so different. I, I mean, I don't think it's. I think the project could be stronger, but it seems like something to support, and it's different and interesting and. <laughs> I, I would support this for, you know, 400 ish. I mean, if if we had to cut a little bit off, but um, I kind of love this. Great, I did a comments that I forgot to read. Someone said it's good good cause and it's a known grantee. Another person said that it's science and it's beneficial. Someone else said it's not really art. I mean, I, I guess it is art just to argue with this person uh, because there are the postcards which have art. Um, it's also science, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Which my you support. So, yeah. Okay. So, and and I I think it's kind of fun that the postcards then would be sent somewhere else and and spread the idea of composting elsewhere. So we're all set. I wish I could do picture in picture with this because I can't see you guys while I look at what I'm looking at. There's probably a way. All you right. Need a separate, you need a separate monitor. No, that's the last thing I need. I have one of those somewhere. All right. <laughs> Boy, then you're in that thing where you're like side profile when on a call. Okay, so next is Hampshire uh, Young People's uh, Chorus applying uh, for the uh, Young People's Chorus Spring Concert in spring of 2023. Uh, they are asking for $600, 100 children served. The only comment was excellent. So this is a, a known grantee for those of us who, who've been on a couple of cycles. Um, their spring concert will be a culmination of a, a year's worth of work. Um, and they're planning for a Veterans Day retreat for their chamber singers and a collaborative concert at Mount, Mount Holyoke College with Hampshire Choral Society in November and community outreach tour in January, where they visit schools, senior centers, and retirement homes. Uh, they also collaborate with Illuminati Vocal Arts Ensemble in February, um, and they do a Handel and Haydn Society concert in March. All of these events will lead up to this uh, event for the Young People's Concert in April or May, which we plan to hold in Amherst, likely at Grace Church or South Church. And they make a note that most of the children live in Amherst, uh, but six other neighboring towns are also represented and they rehearse and frequently give concerts in Amherst. Um, Great project funded. Yeah, Great. Uh, this is this is one that, you know, Same. Uh, the only concern is, you know, they they don't have a date and a location and and yet um, that's been tough to do in the pandemic and we I, I we know that they are good for it, I believe. Matt? Oh, just the same. I mean, they've been, just, they're just a wonderful Amazing. asset to the Valley. Yeah. And I mean, all of that work they're doing and, you know, um, it's, it's only just this small amount that we're funding. So they, it goes a long way. Any other comments? All right, so, mm, now we are, uh, we have Stephen Henderson, who is applying for an accident, accidental wedding, which will be performed April 10th, 2023 at the Amherst Senior Center. Um, they're asking for $325 and the audience should be 40 people. So it's uh, two talented and experimental actors will deliver a 45 minute performance uh, at the Senior Center and their, their guests, volunteers, uh, and staff can attend at no cost. This is an original performance. It's hilarious, exciting, highly interactive. Two med medieval characters reenact a variety of situations related to the accidental marriage of one causing problems for both. Uh, with volunteers from the audience, we see in action the riotously ridiculous circumstance leading to the current predicament. It's a memorable event, um, and due to the highly interactive nature of the show, see attached resume um and as far as um 
this was a 2.64, so it was pretty well supported and um, no, no comments were uh, posted to share. Does anyone champion fully funding this one? I, I'll, I'll champion fully funding this one. I do want to look at, at one thing before I do. I think I just did, but um, I, I agree with you. I just, you know, I just note um, it is another senior center project that we are right. you know, taking the lead on. Right? Yep. Yep. So I'm just looking at what their plan is if they receive less than. I, I guess look, looking at this, I mean, it seems like really high quality programming for the senior center and, and at somewhat less cost and the stipend um, supports more than one person. So uh, from from that perspective, I, I might prioritize this one versus some of the others. Yes, I agree. Okay. All right, so it's a small ask. So let's hope we can do the 325. Any other comments? Okay, moving ahead. Joanna Hesse, uh, Social Fabric 2, a community rug making project. This is happening in December uh, at the Bombix uh, Center for the Arts and Equity in Florence. They're asking for their total budget is $1,212.50, and they're asking us for $1,212, but not the 50 cents. And they expect to serve perhaps 200 folks. Um, last year, this artist led an art project at APE Gallery. They created a felt rug over the course of three weeks and then auctioned it off to support the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts. This is um, the second project along those lines, and it's going to be held at Bombix instead. Um, felt making is a communal activity. It, uh, utilizes shared rhythms and dance like coordination of bodies and the collaborative aspect is what uh, she finds most uh, exciting and and the moments of complete community where creativity physical activity and resources are shared and uh, something is able to be produced that one person would alone never have been able to have the capacity to do. So they will use colored scraps that they've collected through the year and uh, as well as donated sheep's wool for the decorative surface of the rug. Um, comments that we had about this, that it was a great project, uh, but with diverse funding sources, it should should not need even close to the budget to the full budget funding from Amherst and. Um, it's another person that's a very funny specific. Uh, amount of money to ask for and someone else said that it's a large ask and another person said okay but it's in florence um so is there can i just um explain my my comment was the one about the diverse funding sources mm -hmm. it, it just didn't add up so they asked us for the entire budget amount but then they listed off a whole slew of funding sources so you know it's it's kind of hard to understand i i, I don't know I didn't, I didn't really know how to take that i think it looks like a great project but you know, I think we should give them a proportionate amount of money to the number of funding sources that they're asking. And I, I agree. And you know, I'm looking at the budget right now, and and there's a two hundred dollar, two hundred fifty dollar stipend from Bombix that is not in here, or exactly. it, uh, accounting is not a strength here. And doesn't that, make the funding doesn't make any sense. And I mean, they applied to all these other yeah. cultural councils. Mm -hmm. I mean. Anyways, they can't. They it. it I would. I would say under fifty. Under fifty percent is what I would. I would agree. Uh, I, I was mean, thinking around four hundred. You know. I, I was thinking around four hundred. If we have four hundred, yeah. we already have a two hundred and fifty stipend from Bombix that gets them to six fifty, and then whatever any any other councils bring to it. I was gonna also again match. The stipend that was already offered to them that was what i had in my notes too the 250 so that's my two cents yeah i agree just the total amount is now 
my whole soul funding and support. Yeah, I think we can do 250, especially since it is in Florence, you know, um, you know, for, for other grantees, you know, that are, have things happening in Amherst, they rarely get, you know, much funding from, from other councils. So are we all, all good with uh, that approach? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, next is Hilltown Families Inc., which will be followed by Hilltown Youth, which are two different groups, just to get that out of the way up front. Uh, Hilltown Family Suggests is the title, and it's every Thursday in 2023 for 52 weeks. And it will it's uh, an event they're saying that's taking place online at hilltownfamilies.org. They're asking us for $700, and they serve 25,000 folks. Um, they are, uh, it's an award-winning community-based education network, and um, it supports educational and entertainment interests. And they, the Hilltown family suggests, it's a published online um, media that encourages learning through participation in nature-based resources and local and cultural local cultural opportunities. This week, Lee Collum published, you know, they, they put, put this out 52 times a year, once a week, and they're trying to strengthen a sense of place through shared community experiences. Um, they curate a seasonally based list of learning ideas and opportunities for each week um, and to integrate audiences, connect residents to local culture, et cetera. And um, this funding would support cultural councils uh, with research development outreach and the online hosting venue is is a website so comments here was does this count as art it's very it's important and would love to fund uh, another person said it's an online newsletter uh, another person said this is not a public event um, so as far as the the numbers um, for this, it was two point four three. Um, so there's there's support. You know, I, I'm going to just sum up that they really probably do promote a lot of our our grantees, and yet from what I'm seeing here, I'm concerned this doesn't meet our actual guidelines. Um, so it's great work, but uh, is is there anyone who feels that it does meet our guidelines? Hey, um, Julian? Yes. Yeah, we have, uh, at least the past two years, we funded it. Um, which, it, that's not proof that it meets our guidelines necessarily, but, I mean, there's precedent there. Why would, why would it not be meeting the guidelines? I'm sorry, I missed that part. Well, it's, it's not an, a cultural event. I don't know. It's, it, it supports them. Um, it's almost it's almost like it's something that it seems to me, you know, kind of bucking whatever we did past years. It's almost like we would do this out of our admin funds because it's it's important and supports all the grantees. But it to fund it as a as a as a actual event seems a little strange. And yeah, I I feel like it's it would be funding a newsletter it's a it's it's a, it to me that's what it seems like and i've um voted against it both years in the past funding it at all so um well i, and I, I feel don't the think same way sorry now. yeah our, our guidelines don't specify that these things need to be events i mean i, I think we certainly support um operating budgets for a number of things um i, I don't know I, so I'm, I'm i mean i'm fine with the will of the group i just i would caution us to not you know say that it doesn't meet guidelines until we we can specify which guideline it's not meeting but it's it's not a cultural we're funding a communication that's not for a cultural institution 
it's a fan. I mean, it's a social support ne network, right? I mean, it's not. Um, I don't. I don't see. It's. It's like social services. Where it's. We're supporting. Um, I mean, would we support a food bank? Well, well just, I mean, I want to make sure this is a, a compilation of cultural events specific for families that comes out every week. So I, I wouldn't co compare it to social services. Well, it's a form of social media, though. So it's uh, it's a communication, okay. it's a newsletter, it's, you know, it's it serves that purpose. And I think that's what some of us are questioning um in in principle that's that's i mean that's how i see it there's another one kind of like this further down the line that um um but anyway so i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't mind supporting this with a couple hundred dollars but i i just think we have other things which have direct not mediated but direct cultural impact on amherst residents um That's what I would say. Yeah. That's yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to overinvest myself in, you know, arguing for the poor against this. I, I certainly understand the concerns, but I, I would definitely say that, um, you, know, you know, we, I look through it every week, identify things to bring my family to, cultural things. And, and when we were first moved to town, you know, many, many, many people said, you need to get on this thing. This is the best way to, so, it is a you know an avenue to, to culture that I think has got a huge distribution base and and certainly brings a lot of public benefit. Um, so you, you know I, I mean I think a small funding if, if that's sort of the way the group is leaning tonight is fi is fine. I, I would caution against denying it though you know unless we have a really ironclad guideline that's being violated. Yeah, um, I guess, you know, my kind of sticking point with this is while really valuing what, what they do, again, you know, it, it seems to really not be in, in line with the kind of things that we're funding. And I, I certainly wouldn't want to, to then need to fund a whole bunch of other, you know, kind of social media type groups like like this that are publishing a calendar. Is that time, Rachel? Yeah. Okay. Yes, so and we'll I agree with what huh? you did. So. Okay, so moving on to the next. Welcome, Leah. We have, I'm so uh, sorry, my uh, my work ran over. I'm a dance teacher and my boss has a back injury and it's like a whole thing. <laughs> Was that the, um, the family newsletter? Yes. Okay. Got it, okay. So uh, next is Hilltown Youth Performing Arts Program. This uh, is a theater group, and this is for their summer workshop. And they are asking for $1,000, serving 200 folks. Um, I'm not sure where it's being held because it was a rather long paragraph for the location. Um, they do recovery intensives and groups for teens in Hampshire County. They have strong numbers in Amherst. Um, there's an, okay, third, this season is the 13th outdoor traveling summer spectacle with an adaptation of Neil Gaiman's Coraline uh, written by our student and faculty, and it will be performed on our new campus in Heath for the first time. Uh, does anyone know where the new campus in, is Heath a town or a location? It's a town. Okay. And um, so this is their, uh, they provide a year round after school program and summer arts program, uh, intensive training, artistic and professional skill building and leadership development to youth from underserved rural areas in Franklin County and beyond. 
Uh, they inspire transformative growth, teaches appreciation and stewardship of the natural environment and challenges young people to build thriving, sustainable communities throughout their lives. Their summer programs begin with a seven day pre-workshop recovery intensive for young people overcoming trauma, addiction, anxiety, depression, other behavioral health challenges. And they work to incorporate aerial fabrics, flying trapeze, zip lines, whitewater rafting, dance, uh, music, yoga, meditation, journaling, and equine therapy. A five-week program that culminates in an outdoor performance uh, this year at, at uh, Heath. And um, overall, we scored this as a two point, as a two. And comments were um, that it's it's a large grant, but should be fully funded if we're not about this. Kids were coming from addiction and through the arts, then uh, what are we about? And um, another person wanted to make sure that the performance is open to the public, uh, but loves this and hopes it's not outside the guidelines. And uh, is there, I guess, uh, one person already in the comments that championed fully funding it. So uh, who would like to speak to that? Christy, were you saying something? No. 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 Thank you. Uh, other than fully funding it, is there anyone who would like to speak to how they would like to fund it? Um, I remember seeing this project in the past too. Oh, sorry, Cody, you want to go ahead? If, if you're, you're uh, muted, Cody. I was just going to say I voted to, to, to half fund it because they're applying also to multiple um, LCCs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought this was really cool and want to find it, but I forgot they were applying to multiple councils, so I would definitely support a half Funded. Yes, and as it, I mean, their total budget, by the way, is almost a hundred thousand dollars. So, oh. and the uh, salaries and fees, you know, it's it's a very large staff to to do this. So, while it's a large ask to us um, for the benefit it, it brings to the to the community, and there are kids from Amherst who, you know will be participating. I, I don't think it's an un unreasonable ask. It's more just how much can can we really take on and, and can they be successful with less than full funding from us? And I believe they can, you know, but I, I don't think it's an unreasonable ask. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I had stepped away, but I, I would definitely champion the full thousand. And and to your point, thank you. for I, That was the point I was gonna make as well is that, you know, fully, fu fully funding our request is, is a very much a very small part of their of their overall budget and yeah i mean I, I just you know it's just wonderful like the materials that they provided the website i mean if you explore what this organization does and who it does it for um you know i just think it's a really a really wonderful thing and i, I think a thousand dollars is an eminently reasonable amount for the for the public benefit that it yields yeah are we all agreed yeah great thank you Okay, so now we are, uh, we have a grant from Illuminati Vocal Arts Ensemble for their choral concert, The Scythe and the Fountain. It will occur uh, May 20th uh, at the Buckley Recital Hall at Amherst College. They're asking us for $750 and expect it to serve about 350 people. Uh, so this is, um, as we're emerging from winter into the flow of spring, and, and yet um, the grip of cold has not faded from our memory. The sky is dead and the fountain is love and life. Um, so this is John Taverner's elegy, Song for Athene, opens with the choir of saints uh, who have found the wellspring of life. And Randall Thompson's uh, Odes of Horus celebrates uh, spring-inspired bodiness, including a peon. 
to the bright and wondrous fountain and Eric Whitaker's five Hebrew love songs uh, envelops us in the intimacy of humans portraying that love within the embrace of nature and Hubert Howell's Requiem suspends us on the currents of lost grief and, and buoyed by faith. The Lord is my shepherd. He shall lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. It's contemporary music uh, from recent decades up to the present, beautiful, moving and inventive. Um, as far as our overall rating for this, it was a 2.0. Comments uh, were the ticket cost, which I'll go and look up here in just a moment, and that it might uh, need to be adjusted for music totals, uh, but it seems to be high quality um, musical for classical musical performance. So um, the ticket cost uh, is, just we have that. Um, we're at time. Thank you. We're at time with just introducing it. I don't know. Maybe I did. I do. I yeah. We probably should should. I'll allow, start again. Yeah, or allow another five minutes or something. So the ticket cost is um, twenty general admission, fifteen uh, for seniors, and um, ten dollars for students. And they'll offer free tickets to Amherst High students. They hope to sell about 300 in, in uh, program ads. So uh, does anyone champion uh, fully funding this? Does anyone want to speak to partially funding this? I think, you know, we probably are coming back to the same percent uh, of, of music and classical music and, yeah, and it is a like they are getting ticket revenue, but I don't think we should deny them. I think we Absolutely. can give like five, maybe like five fifty six hundred. I don't know. I'm really bad at percents. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, with with the ticket sales um, in there, because we do they they are offering access free to Amherst High students. I don't know how many truly will take advantage of that. Um, just trying to see if they applied to anyone, anyone else. Uh, we said no other agency is funding the concert. So I mean, as far as salaries for this caliber of music, it's 2,500 just for the conductor. Um, and, you know, there, it's a small, small ask to us overall. Uh, you know, I think one thing that's interesting is this, the scores of music is $940, and that, that's a real number. There's a, there's a real expense, but they are, they are also budgeting for any PR advertising uh, or underwriting, I should say, and, you know, they'll, they'll, probably get uh, quite a bit of support. So I, I would support, as Leo was saying, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of $500 or so uh, to, to bring this kind of music, to, you know, but we'll still have to look at total of classical music and, you know, which, which ones we are going to support more, you know, more so. Any other comments? Just, just that they're a strong organization and, and pretty yeah. well known to us. And so, you know, I mean, I, I lean towards a close, you know, close to full, but I, I, I could see an eighty percent kind of a thing. I'll bump it up to. I mean, none of this is final, so I'll bump it up to six hundred. Just, I, I think we we just are anticipating that you know there's a lot of music, so we have to spread it around. Otherwise, you know, it, it is a good organization and and sounds like an amazing work. Any other comments? Okay. Next, we have um, Kat Milo um, for the Ferry Festival. And this would be the Sunday of Labor Day weekend. And it would be at the, the Lake Wallace Sensory Trail, Belchertown. Uh, Kat is asking for $3,000 and expects to serve about 200 people. Um, 
the fairy festival. It's a full day of activities, exploring and cele celebrating uh, the magic of nature. Um, there's greeting from the fairies upon the audience entrance to the trail and little fairy houses and gathering spaces along a stroller wheelchair accessible path. Uh, there's a section of space dedicated to activities such as tea parties, wish writings, and introduction to herbalism and local foraging, dancing, and music. There's another section dedicated to building houses for fairies and other little creatures. All the materials are free for participants and as much as possible um, will be recycled and sustainably sourced and people can learn how to make homes for little fairies. They can learn to build homes for bats, birds, and bees. The fairy festival strives to engage their community into caring about uh, and caring for local nature resources through magic and fun. And um, our um, overall rating for this was a 1.71, and the comments were um, Belcher Town, another, and this would be so amazing. And another person said this was lovely last year, but the funding request doesn't match the event. Um, large, large ask, and did this grantee complete paperwork for 2022? Uh, yes, I just got that today. Uh, so um, I, I, I don't I don't think we can discuss I, funding it, but Matt, I, you attended. If, if so. I may, yeah, as, please, I, please. I feel like I have a special platform here because I believe I'm the only one who attended last year's Fairy Festival, and I, I think that gives me some cachet uh, on this topic. Um, we did fund it at 750 last year. Um, you know, I would say that that was that was a generous grant for the you know for the production itself. Um, you know, I, I mean, I want to give her credit for uh, give, give them credit for, pay, you know, paying their participants, paying the folks who are staffing the tables. Um, it was it was a somewhat underwhelming event, but it was a very lovely vibe. Um, you know, my child enjoyed it. I saw several other children who enjoyed it. They are a creative bunch. Um, I would I would support funding more than last year's amount, which was seven hundred fifty. Um, you know, but but not much more. But I, but I do think. It was a wonderful cultural thing. And in terms of the Belchertown piece, I would just say that, you know, it's quicker to get to Belchertown than it is to, to Northampton, you, you know, from downtown Amherst. So I, I think there's something to be said there as well. Um, but, you know, that being said, I'm not, you know, I'm certainly not going to champion a full funding. And I, and I do think this ask is, is pretty excessive. And I think Belchertown, as far as, you know, that, that town beach and finding an appropriate venue, you know, it's, it, it's not like you can do this just anywhere. It, it, it really wouldn't be suitable to try to hold this at Pupper's Pond. And know? it is ADA accessible. That's like, it's like if we want it to be accessible and then we also want it to be close, there is give and take there. Yeah, I'd, I'd support, you know, the same funding as, as last year. And, you know, this is their second event. They pulled off a first one. Now they're going for a second and then kind of, see see how, how they do with taking what they learned from last year and approving it before I would actually put more money towards it. Um because it even at 750 it's 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 a lot of money, but um how well attended do you think it was from what you saw there, Matt? He might not be able to speak. I would support level funding, but not an increase. Yeah. Yeah. Are we all all agreed? Yes, I would support actually less than last year personally that's what I would vote for because I feel like just to offer a different perspective on yeah. the total versus mm -hmm. um we just I think we have stronger projects but level I mean I have no problem with level but I yeah. okay I put max at 500 personally so I I could be persuaded based on knowing, you know, again, all of the projects that are out there that um, that that 500 would would continue to encourage, you know. Um, is, the, is there anyone else who feels particularly strongly about staying level? Yeah, I think. I mean, personally, I would I would recommend staying level, but you know, I, I understand the skepticism, but just sorry, hang on. But having seen the event, having seen the enthusiasm, you know, it is, I mean, it's, there's a celebration of sort of gender diversity and queerness. And I mean, 
you know, it's got some aspects to it that I think are, are distinct from some of our other grants. Um, you know, I think that the level funding is a very reasonable proposal because I think they should maybe try to stretch the amount they got last year a little bit further. You know, that said, we can come back to this when, when we're actually doing the final numbers. I do have to say that $400 uh, per workshop for the five workshops, is that per person? Because that's a rather high high level of stipend for someone who, who doesn't have like kind of, I don't know, an international CV. So, and that there, there are two stipends. So 2000 of the budget goes to the folks running workshops during the, the festival, 400 per workshop for five workshops. And then there's another organizing stipend for 400. I would think that would be for, for CAT. And then there's another 1600 in the budget for staffing the festival, which is 25 an hour times eight hours and eight staff. And the size of what you were saying happened last year, Matt, I don't, that sounds like a really, really large um, staff to, to run something that was probably much smaller. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we could look at the final report, you know, um, and the numbers there. I mean, I was, I'm giving you kind of a, a humorous, skept, like um, subjective, exp you know, I had a, I had a 20 minute experience at the very end of the day when we got there. So I, that's not an objective view okay. of the thing, you know. Um, unless anyone strongly objects, I'm going to bump it down to 500 and then we can see if we can find more to put there once the numbers are all, all in. Is that okay with you, Matt? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Um, then we have Jonathan Keesing, uh, and his event is Raise Your Voice, and this will be July 15th at the Jones Library. Uh, the grant is for $500. Uh, so this is Jonathan Keesing, Caravan Puppets will perform a program of puppet skits titled Find Your Voice. The show features four classic uh, international stories presented as age appropriate skits. Audiences are treated to a wide variety or a wide diversity of puppets and puppetry styles with beautiful staging original music. Uh, some stories are interactive and all have positive messages. And uh, for, for this, um, our overall score was a 2.21 and uh, the only comment was that it was magical for kids especially and it is free is there anyone who champions fully funding this project I, i'll go ahead and speak and say as far as fully funding this project you know there's not just the stipend to come and perform but there is all of the craft and in making the puppets themselves so that is an art form too um if if we didn't have to balance the budget i would fully support this any other comments of, of uh, why you would like to fund this at a different amount does anybody want to fund it at all other than me? I agree with, um, I think 500 is a reasonable ask. I think it makes sense. Yeah, I agree. I, I would fully fund this. Any other comments? If we're done discussing this one, I have just the more of a general question to pose. Mm. The, but, yes, go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna stop the timer. So I I guess um, I am curious when we're each, cause I am thinking through this as we're all talking is that, are we just commenting on each application on its own merit without kind of thinking about the total amount. So for example, let's say if I went through the entire list of applications when I was just doing the scoring on my own, mm -hmm. I didn't do this, but I was just saying that like, if I was adding up as I was going, mm -hmm. would I then come back and reevaluate everything? Or is that part of why we're doing what we're doing now? 
we're having this group discussion and then when they come back and then adjust the individual um, yeah. amounts because I think we're, um, yes, in principle, we would love to fund a lot of this. Yeah. But I, I just don't know, like, in terms of the conversation. if. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd say it's anyway. multiple things happening. So one thing is whether or not, you know, certain grants even meet the guidelines. So when you look at the, the total number of what's requested, you know, that that comes down because some don't meet guidelines. And yet we are trying to look at each grant based on its own merits. Absolutely. That's kind of the first round and then going back. And yet we can't help. Excuse me for a moment. We can't um, help but like look at how much music we have and how many things are, are are going to be at the senior center and serving you know that audience once we start talking about it it becomes part of this so um but yeah the the main uh goal at this stage is overall value and uh sure i, I can see that we're already kind of looking at some and saying all right we know we're going to have to bring these numbers down so it's you know kind of fluid Matt, you had something to say? Well, yeah, I just want to, I mean, that, that's been the process every year I've been here. And I know, you know, you've been a part of it, Rachel, where, where we kind of go through and, and do an initial assessment and just get a feel for what do we have? You know, what I mean, we have a total amount asked, which is, you know, grossly above what we have to offer. So we have to go through and do what we're currently doing, which is sort of finding out what we actually have in terms of meeting guidelines, in terms of some people have duplicated their grants. Some some people have just asked, sort of like the moon, shooting the moon. So I mean, this is a this is the process. And then, if as you'll remember, what we what we do is we, um, in fact, last year, after we went all the way through, we actually sent out a draft um, a draft balance budget, and then we had two full meetings of additional deliberations where where members tweaked that draft balance budget because. You know, ultimately what we're doing right now is we are eliminating some and we're prioritizing some as being full funds, but the vast majority of these are going to be partially funded. Um, and that's where I think the more nuanced discussions sort of come in. So, I mean, I think we're just trying to follow that same exact process that we've done the past couple of years. And I would, I would say that once we get through this initial 89, um, you know, Julian and I haven't really talked about it, but I think you know, to me anyway, it makes a lot of sense to then send out a proposed balance budget uh, that we can then discuss in an open meeting. You know, well, I was hoping that that one would be 80% and not 40%. And, you know, all the like, there's, I think there's a lot of rich con content discussion that happens at that stage too. So, um, unless there's a, a strong objection, I think that's what we were intending to do again this year. I, I would agree. Are we good to continue? Okay. Our next grant um, is for Daniel Kerouac. Uh, it's a concert for seniors at the Emmer Senior Center. He's asking for $250. It serves 35 people. Uh, the overall scoring on this was a 2.71. And this is a one hour concert of music suitable for senior center populations, easy listening pop and light rock from the 40s to the 70s. Uh, on piano accompanied by vocals. Uh, the location is at the Senior Center um, and uh, or a site event to be determined by the Council on Aging. Um, so with this, there, there weren't any particular comments, but I am wondering as far as, you know, do, do we truly have a, a date and time um, for this? Well, he attached an email from Haley Bolton, who runs the senior services, with a date and time. Okay. Okay. So, and I, I mean, I think it's not—it's not the big formal letter that some folks have submitted, but definitely, it's—you know—it's it, going to happen. Okay. I mean, okay, because it wasn't on on this sheet here. Thank you. So yeah, um, yeah. I will open the discussion on this. I mean, I think. It, it seems fine, but I think we're going to have to put all the senior center ones together. Yes. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. 
proposal. And, and but I think we have to put them all together and mm -hmm. I, maybe I in round two and decide, you know, are we going to fund them all to 75 percent or yeah. yeah, you know, or give them all the same amount of money. Yeah. No matter what they ask for. I, um, yeah, I, I think there were some um, events that seemed much, much stronger and more engaging. You know, this one is perhaps, you know, less less money than those, but I, I at this point agree there's just really no way to, to deal with it since there are so many of them other than to to take them as a whole. We all agreed. Yeah, and I think another criterion related to that is which of these events at the senior center is actually putting money towards because there are a few of them that they're actually, you know, contributing, uh, paying for part of partially. So I don't know if that's something we want to take into account too during that yeah. round. Yeah, that that's definitely a good point as far as the ones that they see enough value in to partially fund uh, versus the other ones. It's like, oh well, we'll send you a letter of support, and you can get paid, and you can come on over, and you know we'll have you know some entertainment, and um, but yeah, where where so, are they putting? Yeah, hmm? I got I didn't notice that. So I mean, that's if you if you can take note of which ones they're. I did not notice them putting, I thought I saw them say they don't have an entertainment budget, but certain def, that's definitely important. So yeah, at least, at least two of them and, where, you know, they were saying we're putting 100, 150 towards this ourselves. There was at least a couple that I remember, but yeah, that's something we thank can you. consider. Thank you very much for noticing that and bringing that up. Cause I think that's going to be very important for us to, to kind of go through these. Any other comments here? Okay, moving on. Uh, now we have uh, Rachel Leader with Clez Cummington um, in August of 2023 in Cummington, Mass. They're asking for $750 to serve 275 people. Um, it's a Klezmer festival in Cummington, Massachusetts, and um, for one day, and they will be seeking to enrich the Western Massachusetts Jewish cultural and artistic community with a vibrant uh, integrational context for celebrating ancestral ritual knowledge transmission and meaningful community connection. It's a secular event and is open to the general public. Um, they expect about 275 attendees of all ages for a full day. Um, they cite that a large number of people in Amherst um, in, are interested in Jewish culture and they aim to bring out many Amherst residents. Uh, they will include Jewish music and dance, Yiddish language, Yiddish spectacle theater, uh, Jewish wood fired oven baking and concerts performed by la local klezmer bands. The overall rating for this was a 2.14 and the comments were, um, very pro funding a Jewish cultural festival seems unique. Um, someone else said the Amherst Nexus is addressed and it's a great event seems special. Other person questioned Cummington, maybe partial funding. Um, they are right that there is a huge uh, Jewish community in Amherst. So uh, does anyone support fully funding this? I just wanted to say, I thought this was a really good example of like oftentimes um, when we look at things that are far away, I thought they did a good job of like explaining. Um, right. I noticed that not a lot of grants do that. And I liked how they were like mm -hmm. really and specific they, to Amherst. And they did apply to several surrounding councils. Um, not, not everyone in the Commonwealth, but you know, the ones that truly would be meaningful for this. And just to, um, Give an idea of the budget it's a uh, nine thousand two hundred and fifty dollar budget you know fifteen hundred of that is just equipment rental um another thousand is the space rental the um musicians are getting paid in in uh the range of 200 for several of them the visual theater folks uh, that's 500 um a six-piece klezmer band 1200 so that's you know 200 a piece um, sound engineer 300, 1500 of it is snacks and organizers a thousand. So it is pretty much, you know, other than the equipment rental and space rental going to, to support creative folks. And 
you know, I, I would support fully funding it. I know we have a lot of music, but this is not music. This is a, a destination cultural um, event. And um, it would be nice if it was in Amherst, but um, that, that'd be the only reason that I wouldn't want to fully fund this. I, I could get behind a full, uh, uh, sorry, a large partial. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put this on a list of slam dunk full full funding. You know, yep. for, for... I I could also be fine putting it at five hundred. I mean, like I said, it's it it is in Cummington. It's not in Amherst. If it was in Amherst, you know, then it would be bringing people you know into our restaurants and stores and and whatnot. Is everyone in alignment at about five hundred? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Thank, thanks for letting me keep moving us along. You know, we're, I think we're not even quite halfway yet. So, <laughs> uh, Don LePere has, um, I hope I said that right, has an event, Le Fever. It's, um, a, it's listed as spring, summer, and fall of 2023 at various music venues, community concerts, and they're asking for $600 to serve a thousand folks. Um, I'm just looking at at the comments here as even before we're getting into this, there's no location, there's no venue. Uh, they only apply to Amherst Cultural Council and multiple people saying there's no venue. So um, yeah, they're, they're suggesting venues like farmers markets and community centers, but I don't believe that this meets our guidelines. Does anyone else we are all in agreement. This does not meet our guidelines. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Thank you. All right. So then we have Ken Longstreet, say free concert uh, by Jeff Gavioli and his Bad News Jazz and Blues Orchestra featuring Cindy Reed. This will be um, June twenty fifth at the. How do you say? <laughs> Somebody say the name of the park for me. Sweetster. 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 <laughs> what is with me today? Um, Toby, could you help Fuji? Oh, are you okay? And it serves, uh, they're asking for $1,500, serves 200 people. Um, she needs to go out if she can. Oh. Um, sorry about that, folks. Uh, it's a free one and a half long, one and a half hour long big band concert and um they enjoy a reputation of being you know the most exciting and busiest big band in western massachusetts they were nominated in a winter winner of the best live jazz uh in the 2021 and 2022 hampshire gazette readers poll and uh they were finalists in the 2020 poll and um it's a i'm just going to breeze through this 19 member band and uh, with a lead vocalist and um, somebody, uh, let, I'll move to the comments. Someone said, well, they're very confident and um, it's, it's a large ask, but I, I would mention that I, I did see them perform uh, when I guess a couple years back when we worked with the cultural district and uh, they, they are not out of line to, to um, uh, and their confidence of, of what they deliver. And it was, you know, the kind of thing where they, they played music, but, you know, people, people, you know, came and danced and, you know, it really, you were just hoping to be out of the pandemic and, and it was, uh, they, they really delivered and brought a lot of, of, of joy for people of many ages. So, um, you know, if this is a, a musical event that I, I would support maybe not fully funding, but, but strongly considering we have a lot of music events. Um, would anyone else like to speak to, uh, if they'd like to fund this and how? Yeah, I would support like, a. um, at least I feel like a thousand maybe. I know that's a lot, but I, I also saw them when we worked the mm -hmm. event and it was just like, people really loved them especially because I think they have a relationship with um the 
um, Amherst district. Cultural so like district. cultural districts, they will go to like those events. And like when people are outside, like there's so many like couples <clears throat> dance and like like older people get really into it. And it is like this very beautiful community vibe. Which yeah. really and it is it is for a performance fun. here in Amherst. Yeah. As far as yeah. Matt, were you going to say something? Just, I, you know, they're excellent. Um, the only reason I would keep it at a, at a two and a high partial is just if we're going to go through and apply the whole sort of um, big band criteria, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of diversity of acts, I would just, and you've already said, you've already mentioned that. Um, but, I, you know, I, yeah. I support everything that y'all have said. I, I think they're definitely a high, a high partial. Yeah. Any other comments? I support it's ours. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll put a thousand down unless um, anyone else feels strongly. And you know, we still have to go back and look at all the music. And you know, it might be that we you know take from something that's not immediately on Amherst and top this off, or or not. I don't know. Any other comments? I feel like Rachel wants to say something. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was looking at the clock. <laughs> okay. Still plenty of time. Right. Just wanted to say time. All right, then Thank moving you. on. Thank you. So we have um, Delia Bridget Martinez, uh, and this is Salsa con Tacos Latin Dance. And it is uh, scheduled for this upcoming year at Mexicalito Taco Bar and Kendrick Park in Amherst. They're asking for $1,200 and expect to serve about 400 folks. Um, this is a volunteer led group that holds Latin dance event uh, biweekly at Mexicalito Bar in Amherst. They also hold a series of salsa socials in Kendrick Park in the summer sponsored by Amherst Park and Recreation. Um, the project would be an extension of our current work because we would be able to also have guest instructors come teach free Latin dance lessons to the community. And uh, many people have asked for the lessons. The dance lessons would be followed by a social dance where uh, all members of the community are invited to stay and listen and dance. Um, they've drawn much attention in the last year and um, they have teachers from Boston, Hartford, Pittsfield areas that want to come back and teach. And they'd love to host these teachers um, and they would want to compensate them fairly um, for time and travel. Um, uh, we, we can't compensate for travel. And um, I'm saying that I lost my place. And uh, they are also saying they'd like to rent out a larger uh, venue for more popular uh, events. So comments here are, uh, no no date um, um but isn't it ongoing i mean they're planning like this ongoing thing over the summer yeah so so mm -hmm. with that fully agree and yet um that's where we kind of get into needing to especially with the direct granting kind of look at what the venue is are there letters of support um and the budgeting so if the venue wait is it by the the venue is the mexicalito taco it, yeah i'm a little confused because there's the kendrick park part of it and then mexicalito i mean at but Mex that's I very know. close i wonder if those two are like if it's like a because that's the taco place i think is where like rayos used to be yeah. And, and they have very jolly dances there. I mean, have you ever been there when they have the dancing? It's like very fun. Kendrick. Um, and Kendrick Park, I think, is like across. Like it's. That's I'm wondering over by Black Sheep, isn't it? Or no? No, I think that's that's yeah. Sweetster. Yeah. They, they, okay. These guys are they're already out there. I don't know if they're doing this specific activity, but there's already a salsa group that meets on Kendrick Park. It's right across from Mexico the new taco bar. Um, I think this is wonderful, I, I, but Julianne, I take your point about the 160 for travel. I would support fully funding minus the, the travel, the unallowable expense. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is in Amherst. 
Um, they, they do get donations. Uh, they said that their current donations are around $50 every other week. I, do think, um, I don't understand quite about if it's at Mexicalito at a commercial restaurant. Um, let's see, Mexicalito Bar and Amherst currently host our socials on the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month from 8.30 to 11 p.m. free of charge. And then Kendrick Park and Amherst is sponsored by the Amherst Parks and Recreation Department, currently hosts our salsa and the free of charge. Yeah, I mean, I think from that perspective, those are, are both totally open to the public and totally benefit Amherst residents. Um, and um, I, I, I would support, I mean, other than the travel, which I guess we can, you know, not fund, I, I just think this is, it's different, fun. it's cultural, it speaks mm -hmm. to a particular group, but it attracts other people outside that group. Um, sure. I, yeah, I, I think this is just a fun summer dancing in the park kind of thing that I would support, you know, as much as we can. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And because their total budget is 3560 um, the travel part is not an issue. Because that's not, you know, if we fully funded at 1200 if we could, right? Um, there's, they're covering that out, out of other funds. So I'd be fine with, with well, leaving, leaving this at 1200 and seeing if we can keep it there. What I would say we should do, and I, I support that, Julian, um, but we need to let them know that, you know, the, the 160 they budgeted for travel, they can't um, use our money uh, for that. So when they okay. submit their final paperwork, but I, I mean, I, I think that's a, like you said, the yeah. thirty-five sixty is their overall, but but we mm -hmm. should we 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 should tell them that explicitly. I think there, there's several grantees that fall into that same thing, whether okay. it's food or transportation, and yeah, we'll have to be clear about that. Or maybe we just add that into the letter as a blanket thing that you know, if you'd had those kind of funds in your budget, uh, they're not applicable, and not to submit them. Okay. Any other comments? All right. So. Now we have um, next Robert Masala, Life Appreciation Through Drawing and Painting, uh, Spring and Summer 2023. It is being held a local park in the community. They're, it's asking for $1,000. Um, I, I have a comment here from Matt, and if this is uh, true, then that's good. We still have no final report, is that correct, from last year? If you can speak to us, I I literally just opened up the um, spreadsheet to double check that. Okay, so um, this is this is one that we might have uh, discussed in in our example um, uh, session when when we kind of reviewed uh, different grants and why they might be strong or not. This is a, a repeat of last year's grant. That's materials for twelve participants to do. Uh, on plein air, you know, watercolor and oil painting with this uh, artist. And, um, you know, we, we questioned last year whether it was truly open to the public, if it was just 12. Many of us liked that it was participatory and treating, teaching people how to, to make art. Um, but if at this point we have no final report for last year's session, um, I, I'm going to question again uh, whether it meets our, our guidelines. Um, and, yeah. and it simply would be that the public benefit isn't isn't there if we don't have the report from from last year and this is the small numbers. Report. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can verify that it's not in there. I would like to, you know, technically they have until the end of December. Um, so, you know, maybe we, but, but tentatively, I think, you know, assuming that we don't have a Final report, we can't fund it. But I will just say that I, I follow a lot of his work, um, you know, just on the basis of last year's application. He does extraordinary work with this um, Casa de los Artistas program. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and it is very, it's, it's, it's very much, you know, anybody can paint on plein air. I mean, really mm -hmm. is a, a laudable program. So I would just say that, you know, if, if Robert's final report comes in in the next couple of weeks, you know, I, I would want to provide some funds for this, although I think we had the discussion last year. Um, 
around, you know, if you're if you're charging folks to participate, then, you know, I don't, I don't think this is like a scholarship type. Right. He was, he was kind of suggesting here that this was going to be for the the materials. So within the budget. Um, OK, no, I'm, I take it back. He, this would be free for participants mm -hmm. if he, it would if he be got free. this grant. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I have to say the quality of his work, if you, you know, if you just Google Robert Mosba and sort of look around at some of the stuff he's doing, it's, it's pretty extraordinary and, and it's very much participatory, you know, in painting. So, but, you know, if, if they does, if they don't get the report in, then it's kind of it's hard to support, you know, mm -hmm. sending more money their way. And it's right. also like we're paying a hundred dollars where it's like it's like we're doing tuition grants for 12 people to have a hundred dollars per you know and i don't know that it's going to people of need it's just going to i mean how, how do we know same as last year is it first come first serve just anyone you know can sign up or is he selecting them or that that was my question too it's like who yeah how does that work and also um whether or not the report comes in should that affect, should that impact how we decide on whether or not this is, you know, providing the public benefit that we hope to offer through our grants? I, I had a, a lot of reservations last year. And um, I, I just think if we were to look at everything that we can fund for the money that they're asking, and it's, it's, it's still hard to justify broad public benefit um, with these funds, in my opinion. The only thing so I, 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 I do take that point, you know, um, but I, I, I want to re respond to the question about the report. So, I mean, I think that that's something that the town has been pretty clear with us about, um, you know, that, that if folks are not, because, because it's cash in hand, um, if folks are not documenting that they're using their funds, um, you know, it, it's really a question of if we give, if we send more money after somebody who has not documented that they've used the first money, that's, it, it's always got an opportunity, you know, we're always, it's a zero sum kind of a thing. So somebody, somebody loses out um, mm -hmm. and then somebody has shown us that they're not necessarily, you know, that they're not necessarily going to use the money that we sent them. Um, so I, I do think that has to be kind of a, and then we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, obviously, as, as, you know, the year unfolds, but we do have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, I understand that. But I was talking, I guess, specifically about this application in particular because it is only for 12 people and the amount that it's being asked for. So for me, it's irrelevant in this case, whether or not the report comes in, because I don't think that would sway my thinking in the uh, the public benefits offering and or you know what I'm inclined to um to vote on. Oh go ahead. Ian. Yeah. I was gonna say adding on to the 12 people, um it's just so low. And then when we start to like do like if we half funded it, then it feels like I would need to look at how the budget is laid out. But then is it like we're funding six people and then that feels like we want to fund it even less and then if we do a quarter, it's like two and a half. So it feels like it's like this weird thing where it's like if we don't like that and then we half fund it, it's like the public benefit shrinks so much that it becomes like complicated like that. So it makes me wonder. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think public benefit has been a challenge all along, and I, I, I would be fine to. While he's a fine artist, I've seen his work, and you know, I, I appreciate that. Um, I think there are a lot of artists who are out there and engaging the community in a in a much more, I don't know, uh, open and an accessible way. Even with this being free, though, it is it is just just a few people. So, uh, and at that we are at seven thirty. And we can I just make one last response to that? And I I don't want to belabor the point on this particular grant, but I, I do want folks to just consider when we talk about public benefit. You know, there's a benefit of being an audience member, sitting you know passively or relatively passively and watching or listening to something. And participating so i mean and I'm, I'm certainly not going to you know not that anybody has a veto card i'm not going to you know argue or, or support this grant forever um but i do think that anything that's participatory with the audience you know a, a smaller number for a more rich experience you know is something to factor in 
No, I, I, I fully agree. And that that's how I was, you know, willing to to put some support to this last year at all was that it was participatory, but um, it, it's still seeing the same one again strikes me as being, you know, just a few people and, and you know, $100 ahead, you know, so um, I think there are other participatory of events that offer a lot more value to a lot more folks would be my comment. So Agreed. thank you. So um, since we had a quorum tonight, are we canceling tomorrow? I think, yeah, I think this is an, uh, it's nice to see you guys and hang out, but you know, three times in a week is, is a lot. So we'll pick up again next week. Just, I agree with that. I just want to get a count on how many meetings we have left. Yeah, it, it is a little tight because we have 45 or so more more grants to go through. I am going to let everyone know that the um, next one after this from Nancy Meager, she asked us to, to what do you call it, revoked, rescinded, uh, canceled her, her application there. She said she wasn't ready. So we will be picking up with uh, Pamela Means next time. Yeah, she withdrew. So, so there's only four meetings left with 45 and you know the final one of those is we really we want to be all the way through this review for the final one for voting so i'm just putting that out there you're doing an amazing job with the time boxing stuff thank you rachel um, so just you know yeah um so that that's we really want to do 15 per for the next three and then perhaps perhaps meeting. more but i don't know if that's realistic yeah yeah so. right i mean so 15 per you know three times three times 15 is 45 minutes so in only six in theory, minutes per grant per application, <laughs> no, not so. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that really is what it boils down to. If you're doing the time thing specifically, and uh, and I think it's working great. I mean, I, I think you're doing an amazing job facilitating, and the timing is great. But you know, it's just we just got a lot of grants in a short period of time. Yeah, just that, I mean, the, the flip side is we, if we can't get our business done, we've got to add meetings. You know, after the 14th. So um, let's just all stay on track. Yes, Rachel. I just have a really quick question. Um, the um, MCC has that tool in the grant calculation. I don't know if, if that's something we should be using later because um, you know how, as your as we approve, they they kind of will the 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 that uh, function will add up. It'll, it'll keep it running tally basically. Oh, I'm doing that in Excel right now. Okay. With the numbers okay. that we've been talking about, we're at thirty. Right. Okay. I was just curious if that's something that. Okay. Thank we're you. We're about halfway through, so we're we're in the ballpark. I'd I'd say we're we're, you know, um, I don't know what our total. We none of us know what our total amount is because we still have to look at some other, uh, admin uses of funds and stuff. But I'm I'm not worried seeing that we're at thirty three thousand five hundred for what we are, have you know estimated. Okay. So we're meeting next week next week okay okay this has been wonderful thank you all and Bye. uh see you later thanks Bye. everybody